Hey, this is Leon Griffin from WVO Designs, and today we're going to go over the setup of the three-phase inverter for the extreme raw power centrifuge. So, uh, the drives come with this book. Uh, it has everything that you could possibly imagine in it. Starts with warnings. You should read these because, you know, they don't write these for fun. And more warnings. And, uh... Then gets down to, to business here. The basics of the drive, let's take a look at it. Um, down at the bottom is the power out. Up at the top here is the power in. Now, I don't have a, uh, a real industrial installation here. This is just on my bench. So this gives you an idea of what makes it work. But you're going to have to take a look at your building codes and all sorts of uh, other sparky stuff to determine exactly what's right for you and your location. Once you get it, you're going to plug it in for the first time. I'll go ahead and plug that in for you. You're going to get that, which, if all works well, should drive the motor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by turning this knob to zero, and then hitting the go button, and then I'm just going to slowly turn, the, turn it up. And what's happening here is sucker spinning I'm gonna turn it all the way up that really doesn't look like much does it so this is reading now 60 Hertz and I can flip through the display modes and that's saying 1750 rpm cool um, but we've got to we've got to program this so this it, it reads exactly what it's uh, what it's supposed to so I'm gonna just hit stop and let it coast down and that's the frequencies that's going down on this point and uh, we're going to go to the quick start guide. Pretty much everything you need to know to get set up is in this, this quick start card. So don't lose it when you go and unpack the motor or the, the controller. You're going to want these parameters. So here we go, starting at the top here. The parameters are also listed in section 4. Um, let's uh, scoot over there so that we can show you that I'm not lying. Here's full listing of the parameters, and uh, there's more stuff in the back, and you got all, you got pretty much, I can't, e I don't even know what this thing does. It talks about frequencies and stuff, but <laughs> we we don't really want to get into that. We want to get you up and running as quickly as possible, and you can park this on the john or wherever you do your light reading, and and uh, figure out if you can get it to, uh, you know, do the dishes or something, but. Nonetheless, let's uh, let's get going with the programming. Programming, what basically we're going to do to start is we're going to program the zero parameters. Those are all the, the motor parameters. So the first one here that's of interest to us is motor base RPM. That's 0 03. And the motor base RPM for this motor is 3450. Now, Let's go to go set zero three. I'm going to push get over here. I'm going to push program and zero program again, and then I'm going to three. And it says 1750. So well, that's clearly not 3450. So we're going to make that happen. The base RPM is the RPM that the motor would spin at the base 60 hertz, which is what you would normally get but this controller will change that for us so that we can get whatever we want and in this case it's going to be enough to get us 6000 rpm so 3450 base frequency it says end that's good takes us to 04 and let's take a look at our little thing what 04 is motor maximum rpm well that's a good one so it's set to 3450 now well we're going to crank that sucker up a bit which is the whole point of this little gizmo till it reads 6000 rpm Six thousand. cool now you could make it work at this point, but we're going to go ahead and change a couple other little things that I think will help you out. Um, we're going to check that 
1-0 stop methods is set to ramp to stop rather than coast to stop. So let's uh, get over to 1-0. So I'm going to hit the back button, which takes us back there, up to 1, 1 0, 0. And it's set to 0, which is ramp to stop, which is what we want, which is cool. And now we're going to go to 1 0 1, which is acceleration time. And it's set up to 10 seconds. Now you can leave it at 10 seconds if you're happy with that, but uh, I'm going to bring it down to be a little more exciting. We can do, let's say, 6 seconds. That's the speed it's going to take to get up to speed. And then the deceleration time. Check that. It's set to 30 seconds. Now, I played with this a little bit, and uh, 30 seconds seems to be a long time. So we're going to use the controller to actually do a DC break, and we're going to bring that down to 10 seconds. You don't have to do these steps, but hey, we've got the controller, so we might as well use it. If you go below 10 seconds, you'll get an overload on the... Uh, on the controller, somewhere around five seconds or so, it, it just fritzes out and doesn't do anything good for you. Now, the last piece that we're going to do is we want the controller to read, uh, by default, we want it to read motor RPM rather than frequency. It means something to me, frequency. I, I just don't really think about frequency all that much, and uh, I don't know who does. So let's get down to the... Um, Let's get over to here. Right here, it's 8-00 multifunction output terminal. And we're going to change it from 0 to 1 motor speed RPM. So let's go back one and get it up to 8. I think I can go down. Yeah, look at that. 0, 0. And it's default at 0. And we're going to bump that up to 1. Awesome. All right. So we're set. I'm going to get my display back to the default here, which is RPM. looks like that. Just hit go, and we'll, we'll watch the RPMs go up. And uh, just for your own information, the rheostat will override any of this. So if I turn the rheostat down to zero and hit go, nothing happens. And we can ramp up to whatever we really want. So you'll probably just leave that all the way up and use the on and off button. All right, so that's what we're looking at. And uh, hopefully that'll <laughs> keep my uh, inquiries down to the really interesting ones. Not that I don't love talking to you guys, but uh, you should have now the information in hand. All the parameters are written inside here. And like I said, got a, a nice book to, to read at your leisure to, to do all sorts of other things. Uh, the only other things that I would think that are going to be high on the list is you can wire in to these terminals here a remote on off switch so you can put this in a box and uh, operate the on and off by using a, a regular toggle switch wired to, to these terminals. Of course it's, it's written about in here. Um, and there's also a, a relay function that could be used to turn on something such as the heater or some other fancy stuff. A light <laughs> can be triggered all different ways, but uh, that's up to your creati creativity. So, I'm Leon Griffin from WVO Designs, and uh, thank you very much.